Hello, my name is Paul Harvey and I am a midlife coach and you are listening to a life, passion and business shortcast. Now, over the last few years, I have spoken to hundreds of people and I've discovered that our story is everything because what we do, feel or experience is based on the stories that we tell ourselves. This shortcast is a bite-sized episode to explore the ingredients of a good life. We bring out the thoughts, tips and tools so you can try them on for size. So let's explore and see what is possible. Hello and welcome to A Reflection. So what comes up for you when you recognise the goal you want to hit, you're not going to make it? How does it feel for you? What happens when you get to that place of realisation that what you imagined or what you desired is not going to happen? Do you go into shame? Do you go into disappointment? Do you see it as a failure? Or do you see it as an outcome of a circumstance? I'm having to deal with my own demons on this one. Are they demons? I don't think they are really. I think they're reality checks. As you may know, or may not know, I've been talking about it for a while, I had plans to do a marathon this year in October. And I have been training for that event. But it's been a year of niggles. I've had niggles in my knee, particularly my left knee, which has stopped me doing the amount of training that I need to do. So consequently, I started my long runs quite late. And as a marathon trainer, you have to get used to doing significantly long runs, kind of 18, 20k, 25k sort of thing. Anything up to 38k, 35 or 36k you would probably do, which is not quite a marathon, but it's pretty close. It's about 20 miles. And I haven't been doing that length of long runs. And I started a few weeks back and they have been absolutely flooring me. I have come back from those long runs feeling absolutely done in. I did 28k a few weeks ago and I really struggled to get there. I did 20k on Saturday, yesterday, and I have to say, while it was doable and I was fine with it, I recognised I was not holding the pace I wanted and it was tough. So the realisation is, if I can't run 20k without feeling exhausted, the chance of me running 42.8k is looking pretty slim. It's looking like it will be an overstretch and I will probably do some damage to my knee probably or to other parts of my body so there's the reality check for me i have got to make a decision and i've made the decision pretty much i cannot do the marathon at the beginning of october as i wanted to i need to reevaluate what i'm going to do now there are other options because i'd like to run in october and probably what i will do i will change the race that i'm entering for there are other races on, on the same day that i could enter but I've still got to overcome the disappointment of it, the disappointment of not saying, OK, I because I, I did a marathon in 2022 and I did it in four hours, 35 minutes. And I would like to get as close to four hours as possible before I draw a line under the whole idea of running marathons again. But there we have it. I'm having to deal with my disappointment. And I've told people I'm doing a marathon. I've put it out there in the world. And now I'm going to have to face the fact that I can't do it. Now, do I feel like a failure on this one? I can't say I do particularly. I feel I'm taking the adult path on this in terms of that I am recognising the reality of the, of the situation. You know that old thing about smart goals? You know, a smart goal is specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and timely. And the marathon project that I aimed for, everything was in alignment in, on some levels. It was specific. It was measurable. Achievability. That was the question. Was it achievable? And that's down to things that were somewhat beyond my control, my body. Is it relevant? Absolutely relevant in my life. Timely. Achievable in timely are the troubles I'm having. Because I cannot achieve what I'm trying to do in the time that I have available. I suspect because of my niggles earlier this year, had I needed probably a much longer run in to this 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 goal. I needed to be training a lot earlier and in probably a different way. And there are another a number of factors that I haven't taken into account here. So, you know, I take on the responsibility that I, I won't achieve this marathon I want to achieve, but I'm also recognizing that it's not a it's not a not a done deal. It's not gone. I can still run on that particular day. But I'm taking the adult path and looking after myself. 
But now, how do we do this in other goals in life? You know, there is a disappointment. Absolutely, I'm disappointed that I'm not going to do it at this time. And there's going to be a, I'm going to get some kickback from that, no doubt. And it's the same with other goals in life. You know, we achieve monetary goals. We achieve weight loss goals, maybe. All of these things have their consequences. And that is the point, really. There's no right or wrong in any of this. Goal is just a signpost on a route to somewhere. It's not actually something that that is that important. It is the journey that's important. And marathon running is a particularly good example of that because it's the journey. It's the training journey you do to get to the event. And when you're at the event, the idea is to get to the event as healthy and fit as possible so that you can do the thing and prove that the training you did was worthwhile. And I guess a goal is the same thing. A financial goal is the same thing. You you hit a financial goal because of all the things that you put in place to get you there. So this is the fascinating thing about it. You know, we get disappointed about these things, but there's always, you know, it's always just about outcomes. This is an outcome of my situation and there'll be other races. And maybe, just maybe, maybe it's the time that there are other physiological things going on in my body. I'm 61. I'm not a young man. Uh, There may be other physiological things going on that I'm not aware of that I need to check out. One of the things that I am conscious of is I'm losing muscle mass as I age. And maybe it means I need to do a lot more strength training. There are so many variables in this and, you know, I've got to find, tune my way through it. Anyway, that's me. That's where I am. The question I was asking at the beginning of this, this conversation, where do you put this problem? Where, how do you deal with goals that you're not going to achieve? Do you set them? I know I have met a few people like that. I used to do the same thing. I met a few people like that who never set any goals at all, purely and simply because they knew they would probably not meet them and didn't want to experience the failure of doing so. And that's the point. There's no such thing as failure. There is just information. It is all information, actions and outcomes. And failure is an important part of discovering what works. And so avoiding failure means we avoid the discovery of how to move forward. So I have had a failure in terms of my training was not good enough to meet this outcome I wanted. And maybe there are other factors involved on this, but it's still the truth. I cannot, if I want to stay healthy and not injure myself, take part in this race. I have failed in that respect. But what I have actually gained is information as how to move forward. And I need to get more information as how to move forward. But failure is just information. That's the key here. My lack of action in some direction has led to the outcome where I am now. And the same with everything that we do in life. It's always down to actions and outcomes. So how you deal with a goal you haven't achieved is the question of mindset. It's always down to how we think about it and how we feel about it. And that's the same with every single thing that happens in life. It's always down to how we feel about it. So, okay, if you are looking to achieve something, and bear in mind, this is also relevant to the focus conversation. When we really want to achieve something, when we are totally focused on it because it's a vision that we have and we're holding and we want to feel in a certain way when we get there, that is a focus, that is focused action. We are pulled towards it. We are propelled in that direction. We're not propelled actually, we're we're pulled towards it. And the difference is in terms of the marathon training that I'm doing and I know I keep coming back to this, but that's where I can have the obvious relevance of it. I was being pulled to the idea of getting a better marathon time. And that's what pulling me towards it was. In my current fitness condition, with the fatigue that I'm feeling at about, I'm, what's happening? I'm, I'm getting fatigued about an hour into my run. To the point where my everything's an effort. It's becoming hard to move. Now, I can force the issue. I could try and pushing my way through this. And that would be the biggest mistake going. Because if I pushed myself through this, I would probably end up with a marathon time, which was in excess of four and a half hours, maybe five hours, maybe more. And I would possibly damage my body in the process. And that's what happens when people push their way through a goal. It is much healthier to be drawn towards it and also to put acceptances into the fact when something is not achievable. 
in the current situation. Reevaluate the plan. Reevaluate the plan to look to be kind to myself, as always, always about kindness. And the marathon will happen next year. And maybe it won't. Neither matters. It would be nice to have done two marathons. Maybe three. I don't know. Does that do three? The key point of this conversation is to look at how you deal with a missed goal. Do you treat it as a failure or do you see it as an outcome, a consequence of the things that led to that point? If we can see it as something that is just information, an information on the route to success, that is so much more powerful than seeing it as a shameful failure or something to be disappointed about. Okay, you can have some disappointment, but move on. That's the po- that's the key point of it. Accept it and move on. Next. Always what's next. Anyway, I would love to hear how you deal with this sort of stuff. If you'd like to reach out to me and have that conversation, please do so. Um, as always, thank you so much for being on the journey with me. Do check out the website at lifepassionandbusiness.com. Loads of resources for you. And of course, there is the powerful method of focus coaching, which you are very, very welcome to have a conversation about because conversations are always good. And if I can help you move forward, that's always part of my life. As always, thank you so much for your time and attention. I will catch you next time. All the best.